So one of the most important parts of back to school, whatever, uh, is your connectivity. And this has always been the problem that a lot of people have when they're working from home is having the right amount of connectivity. And so we're gonna talk about some of those, uh, the challenges you have, maybe some of the misconceptions people have about how their internet works and maybe what, what they might have purchased and they just don't quite understand that. So we're gonna talk about, first of all, what comes into your house so from your provider, and then also once it's inside your house, how does it actually get to all your devices? And there's a couple things we have uh, to share with you that might, might make you think about uh, the, the setup that you have, but also how you can make it better. Let's talk about the, the internet getting into the house first of all. So if you're like most places uh, in Canada or the US, there's usually two or three providers uh, that offer internet service uh, packages. And then a lot of these sub brands that are buying it wholesale. Uh, the big thing is not only the, the download speeds and download speeds, because a lot of these uh, internet service providers are offering like these gigabit down packages, which is a, a thousand megabits. Which is amazing. It's fast, super fast. But it's only one small piece of the puzzle. The big challenge that people have, especially when there's multiple people on your network, is the upload speed. And typically, you're going to find different carriers are going to offer different levels of upload speed functionality, uh, depending on the package you purchase, but also depending on the provider and the technology being used. Quite a lot of the times, though, your download speed is going to be significantly faster than your upload speed, and that's going to dramatically affect the call quality you're going to have on a Zoom call. If half your house is on a Zoom call separately, uh, you're all sharing that same pipe to go back up to the internet, to go out to your school, to your work, or wherever it has to go. And that's the big challenge. A lot of times, these are not synchronous amounts. So if you bought a gigabit package, make sure you actually have a gigabit up as well. I think that's super important. So when you're thinking about download, it's all the web pages that you're going to, the surfing, the researching, it's any of the stuff you're downloading. And if you're streaming, like we all are with Netflix and Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus and, uh, and all of that, you know, a fast pipe is great. Coming down, that video is coming down and it's, it's in for the most part, good in all of these packages. But like you said, we're all doing these video conferences now, whether it's the kids or the adults. And so, as you can imagine, the video coming at you from the other side, great, but you've got to send that video back. So if you've got more than a few people in your house, that gets clogged really quick and the video quality goes downhill. Yeah, so everybody else sees you looking all glitchy and blocky. Exactly. Okay, so make the right choice when it's uh, you know comes to the time to choose your internet service uh, provider package, but then it hits your house. And so typically your ISP, your internet service provider will provide you with their modem that uh, you know gets that internet in. And a lot of times they'll bundle a router into that. The router is how it gets the internet uh, to all the devices in your house. And so if you've got one of these combo ones and it's more than a few years old, I would look at either A, phoning your ISP to get the latest one or getting your own third party one. I, I prefer the third party one. Yeah, because uh, you get the best. You get the best and quite often a lot of these uh, ISP provided ones aren't the best of breed, they're just the best of cheap. Um, and they hand them out like candy because you know everyone wants them whether they understand what it means or not. If you're remotely interested in having a really good quality Wi-Fi signal in your house, you want to consider something like a mesh network. Uh, this gives you the ability to have multiple nodes throughout your house. You'll lose any dead spots. You don't need to worry about extenders or other garbage technology that never quite worked properly. And this will be a seamless transition in your house by having a mesh network that talks to all the different devices. Uh, typically, the amount of devices you can connect is much higher and it's really easy to set up now a lot of these things are all managed by simply by an app fantastic point the mesh networks I think are almost a must-have if you've got a house of any size because we all have these dead spots and in the past we get these Wi-Fi extenders and, and what have you and I would have to say they marginally worked I think they were more trouble than they're worth uh, for the most part. Well, because they quite often they would set up a secondary network that you'd have to connect to. So if you want to be able to move around your house with your laptop, you'd have to change your connection and switch. Confusing. If it even worked at all. Yeah, so uh, tons of uh, technical issues with that. And sometimes they're the shape of a puck or like a little mini tower. They actually look, you know, pretty decorative in, in most cases. So you have one where the internet comes into the house and then you take the other one or two and place them strate uh, strategically through the home. And it's just one network. It just, no matter where you go, it just automatically transfers you to the best internet connection. And ideally you're gonna have one of these uh, pucks or nodes 
higher up on your house so it radiates down and covers the most space possible um, and you don't have too many too close together. Uh, spread them out. You can put them, the nice thing, you can put these in closets, you can put them in a bathroom, wherever there's a dead spot, it'll just connect to the, the main node and boost that Wi-Fi signal throughout your house. Okay, so we covered the routers. Uh, I mean, you can get additional features. Some have uh, some really good parental controls, so you can control how long the kids uh, are online, where they're going uh, as, as well. Uh, and some have extra little ports on them, so you can plug in like an external hard drive, so you can share storage in the house uh, or printers. You also have the ability with some of these as well to plug into your printers. Even if it's not a wireless printer, it'll make it a wireless printer. And some of them have some additional features like built-in antivirus, for example, at, at the router level. So TP-Link, for example, has a line of Deco uh, mesh networks that will block that before it even gets to any devices. So that's a pretty handy feature. Okay, so let's get even more confusing. <laughs> There's different Wi-Fi uh, standards as far as the speed and capability. So back in the old days, you might have heard of uh, terms like 802.11b or .g or AC. So the one that we've been on for the past few years has been 802.11ac. They've kind of renamed that whole thing now. That's Wi-Fi 5. And I, I kind of appreciate that because all those numbers, who, who the heck knows what any of that means uh, anyway. So Wi-Fi 5 is kind of the standard out right now. There's new Wi-Fi 6 that takes it up a notch. So you're getting more speed to all the devices going into the home. But more importantly, Wi-Fi 6 can handle more devices. I look in my house, I did a count, I have close to 50 wireless devices. So it's not just laptops and phones and tablets, it's the printers, it's the wireless speakers, it's all my smart light switches. So when you start adding all these different devices onto the load of your Wi-Fi router in your home, if you don't have a decent router, the traffic is going to come to a standstill. And that's going to be why some of those things don't work as you expected. Smart TVs, streaming boxes, I mean, I could go on. So, Wi-Fi 6 is the latest standard. If you look at all the new phones, like the new iPhones and new Samsung phones and the new laptops, they're all coming with Wi-Fi 6. So, the Wi-Fi 6 router, if you've got the budget to purchase one of those, you are investing into the future for the next several years in your home. So, all these new devices will be able to go at the whole Wi-Fi 6 speed. It's also backwards compatible so it'll work with all the older devices uh, as well. So if you've got the budget, uh, and you know, the prices have come down dramatically on these things anyway, as they do every month, yeah. uh, find one with Wi-Fi 6. If it's not in your budget realm, Wi-Fi 5 is, is really good too. Yeah, definitely. So ISP, make sure that you have not only good download speed, but really fast upload speeds uh, as well. Make sure you ask them about that. Make sure that you have a decent router if you can afford it. A mesh network will solve all of your issues as far as dead spots. And make sure that you get at least a Wi-Fi 5 router capable system. Wi-Fi 6 would be the best. That's right.